very good evening one and all i think the speaker is having network issues uh, she will join within another one or two minutes i kindly request you please stay on the line uh, just now she send a message she will join in another two minutes we'll begin at uh, 6:40 um ba ma'am yeah i think uh, uh, see uh, i would like to share my experience with you all regarding that journey we started regarding that mental health webinar uh, i think when the lockdown was announced in india especially in tamil nadu uh, when i invited the first speaker for our webinar series is dr subhasri she is there in that top of the <laughs> uh, dr subhasri is the first speaker for our initiative i think when we start positively then that uh, our progress will be in the right track and we are i hope and everyone will we accept that we are in the right track so uh, when we floated this uh, webinar we have received a huge response from the participants and uh, and we thought that uh, we send a mail to many experts they immediately accepted our invitations so when you look into that in the month of april and may we had two experts in a day but now we are inviting only one expert in a day the reason is we had a, a, a severe i think we are not able to spend our family time <laughs> when we talk about mental health and other things we have to take care of our family also so we decided to have only one session in a day so that's why we come to on 6:30 and uh, when we decided to have a mixed population and different topics i think almost we found that all the countries we send the invitations i would i would like to say that most of them accepted if you take our calendar still in the exports were agreed for up to august month so that much uh, um, export were willing to take the sessions today i think export joined with us i think um, we will begin the session uh, very good evening one and all uh, on behalf of the department of psychology american college meta school of social work chennai mhlm institute of mental health madurai and international center for counseling uh, clinical psychology and psychotherapy indian association for mental health and well being and psycho oncological society for turkey so these were the associating institution on behalf of them behalf of this association i welcome you all for this uh, 126 webinar session the power of perception uh, the topic itself when we were floated earlier uh, i think uh, other than our group members there are other group members that means those who are not in the group requested the link i think around 60 to 70 members can you send me the link i would like to attend we are very passionate to attend that so you know that importance of the topic um with us uh, one of the renowned person i think she is known to us she is close to us we had a uh, earlier session also in different institutions uh, miss manvita she is an expert in different field now i invite mr krishnan to introduce the speaker to over the audience i welcome you all for this uh, 101 under 26 webinar session yes sir. you can unmute yourself and shall i start suresh yes please okay i was unmuted yeah now we can yeah, we are hearing okay uh, good evening one and all uh, it's you know it gives me immense pleasure to introduce manvita once again a good friend i've been in touch with her for quite some time uh and you know manvita maskode is a positive psychologist and a corporate trainer and uh, she had done her you know formal training in i um, you know in uh, bachelor's of fine arts and you know she is also a bharatanatyam dancer um, and uh, she is a distinction i mean you know she is a rank holder in karnataka university so many distinctions she has got and um, another thing in the last time also i said you know it was a for many even for her it was a surprise that you know somebody noted that you know she represented uh, karnataka you know karnataka state uh, in uh, table tennis uh, as well as in skating and uh, not only these two sports you know she enjoys long jump uh, hockey throw ball what not uh, manvita and uh, apart from that uh, you know she has got um, lots of uh, ngo work she is uh, connected with and um, she has got something called uh, corporal ritual healer living workshop which is very um, uh, very prominent and you know it's uh, it goes to the grassroots levels and um, 
like you know, it goes to the below poverty line women, teachers, students in the rural districts of the state. She is passionately connected with the people. Uh, now with that uh, short note, um, you know, I would like her to uh, take over the session um, and people are going to enjoy it. And I would like to uh, request all the participants to keep uh, the mic on mute mode and, um, you know, please enjoy the uh, session. Um, try to be, you know, uh, try not to disturb the uh, session by, you know, by unmuting yourself so that, you know, it get disturbed and the people are having, uh, you know, little yawning, you know, can, you know, close their uh, video also so that the people, others don't get, uh, uh, you know, uh, get into sleeping mode. Thank you very much, Manvita. It's your day. Take over, and we are really looking forward to another uh, energetic and you know battery recharging uh, session from you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Krishna sir, and thank you, Suresh sir. That was such a warm welcome. I can only be but grateful to the kind words that you have said. Thank you so much. Uh, hello everyone, good evening. What a great evening. It's so nice, though the lockdown is on, life has taught us that nothing can be locked. If there's one lock, then you are unlocking many more. On that note, um, first and foremost, I'm sorry I was late by five minutes. I usually am on time, but then there was a situation over here, hence I was um, delayed by five minutes. And without wasting another moment, let me just share my screen. Um, is my screen visible? Krishna sir, Suresh sir? No, not it, not it. It's, it's, it's loading, ma'am. Yeah, it's loading, okay. yeah. Is it visible now? Not it. Uh, now, sir? Not it. It says you are viewing Manvita's uh, screen, but uh, it doesn't show anything. It's a blank page. It's not it uh, loaded actually. Can you go back and redo it? I don't know. Uh, there is a network issue from our side. So we'll join again, I think. It looks like.
Suresh, I think you should change the music here. Yeah. Like, morning. <laughs> She has come. Now you are sharing, Manvita? Yes, I'm so sorry. There was some connectivity issue. I tried to fix it. Okay. Or you can send the PPT. Suresh will uh, share it from his uh, system. I think uh, it's visible now, sir. Same thing not coming through it says it started sharing but uh, we're not getting anything inside okay can you watch stuff send it by whatsapp i will send it to you or if you have suresh number directly send it to you one second sir Is it visible now? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. You can make it full screen, yeah. Visible, sir? Perfect. Okay. Uh, can I start? Wait. Can I start? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, well, you see, today, uh, this evening, we are just going to take a small, small, small journey into the power of perception. The perception itself is a very large and huge topic that we can address for, the, for an entire day. In fact, it goes on and on. But to keep it short and crisp, to, and just to give you a glimpse of uh, how do we perceive and why do we perceive the way we perceive. Uh, I shall just take you through a couple of um, pictures. Okay, here are two lines. I want participants to tell me which line is bigger, which is the bigger line. You can comment, you can please use the chat box and uh, tell me is it A or B? The arrow which extends or comes together? B, A, B. Both are same. Both are same length. Really? Okay. I think we have more uh, option for A. People are telling A is longer, right, right. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Bharti. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Rashika. Yes, if you have, if you have a, a scale around next to you, if you have a pen around next to you, just pick it up. Pick up your pen or pencil and then try to measure the length. Try to measure the length. It's almost the same. But then, what is happening in our mind? Why did we perceive this notion of one being longer than the other? Well, this is what we call as perception. It's all because of the arrow. We are so attuned to the arrow 
that when the arrow is closed, then our spatial knowledge tells us that it's a closed space. The arrow is shorter. Whereas when it's broad over, it doesn't look like an arrow. It looks just like another line. Then it looks larger. The uh, line looks longer. Now let's move to this one. I want participants and the uh, invitees over here to participate in this. Oh, is my voice breaking? Am I audible? Yes, yes, you are audible. Okay. Clearly. Okay. okay, thank you, thank you, sir. Now I have three cylinders here. The one at near the um, closest to the screen is A, the one in the middle is B, and one at the further end is C. Now tell me which is the larger cylinder? You can put it in the uh, chat box. C, C is larger, definitely, right? C is larger, it looks large, doesn't it? Well, when I looked at it for the first time, when this particular image popped in front of me, I really thought C was the larger one and A the smaller one. But again, pick up your tool, the all pervasive tool, your pencil or your pen, and then try to measure it. It's just the same. It's really the same. It's really the same. Yes, it just appears larger. This is because of a perception. Now, I have another very interesting question to you. How many colors are there in this particular slide? How many colors do you see? How many colors? You can tell me one, two, three, five, ten. How many colors? Two colors, three colors. Four colors. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jyoti. Thank you so much, Shanti. Thank you so much, Raja. If you look at it, actually, there are not many different shades of the same color. It's just that the way it is placed makes it look like there are many shades to the same color. But, oh, well, six. Somebody says six. Ganga Devi. Sadia says seven. Wow. But then see how your mind plays on you. There are actually just three colors over here, just three. But then because of the way it's placed, it makes you, it appears that one shade is more darker than the other and one cube, one cylinder is larger than the other. If you look at those lines, those lines are drawing uh, in towards you and uh, it appears that whatever is at the distance, when compared to the smaller line, looks larger, whereas the cylinder closest to you has lines, uh, the lines on the floor, which looks larger. So the cylinder looks smaller, but all the three cylinders are the same. This is another example for uh, me to bring you on to the perceptual intelligence. Now, the, there's another thing. Now tell me, where is the dot? Which is the larger dot? I think by now you have figured it out. Is it the big circle or the small circle which has the larger dot? You can put your comment. It's the same. Both are same. Both, yes, small. Okay. Yes, yeah, small one looks bigger. But then, it's all about how we perceive. If I had put this slide in the beginning, I'm sure a couple of you would have told me that the smaller circle has the larger dot. But then we went through two other uh, pictures which now triggered another way of looking at things. And your perception immediately but gradually shifted and it told you, your brain told you, well, there are, there's more than one way to look at it. And we are going through a flow. There's some comparison, but then if I look very deep into it, very intentively, then they look the same. They look the same. Black holes are the same, right? Thank you. That was very nice, Sadia. Now look at this picture. Do you see two elderly people, one grandma and one grandpa over here? Yes? Type Y in the chat box if you see two people there. 
Do you see two elderly? Yes, yes. Yes, Sandhariwali, yes. Sriniti, yes. Right, thank you. Now, do you still see two people? The older people, right, with an instrument. Oh, really? You see three people. Okay. Now, now look at it. What else do you see? We see musicians. If you keep your center of focus in the middle, which looks like a vase, then you see two, two elderly people. But then if you go very close by, and look at the image, then there are a lot more details in it than just two people. If you look at this picture, then you see that there are two musicians, yes, with the people with hat and then musicians. And look at the uh, old grandmother's earring. That's a bottle over there. There's a bottle. If you look at it very closely, then you'll see much more details. Look at the ear of the older gentleman, you see a woman coming out of it. This, my dear friend, is an illusion, but then this is how we perceive. We perceive what we wanted to perceive the first. If your mind could look at the grand, uh, the elderly <clears throat> couple over here, then your mind is more focused into the larger whole. You, you're a person who is a big chunk thinker. You think in Larger, you, you like to look at the big picture. You like to look at the end product. If you are a person who picked up the small details within the picture, the bottle, the woman coming out of the um, fort, two musicians, then you're a small chunk thinker. You like to look into details. You like your life to be so detailed and detail oriented that you always look into the minute details. And why does this happen when the same image is put forth? Why do two people think differently? That is where perception comes into place. Let's move ahead. And my dear friends, this is the power of perception. What is perception? Perception has two sides to it. One is yourself and then what you perceive. You have made your own schemas, your own ways of understanding things, your own mnemonics and the way you look at things. There are certain um, images in your mind and there are certain connections in your mind that you have made up based on the experience that you have experienced in your life. And how did you come to that is because you were told to look at things in a certain way. You were trained to look at something in a certain way and to top it all, you were told to perceive things in a certain way. And who did that? The society at large, our parents, our siblings, people around us. But, but, there's always something new to it. When you can see the same image again and again, you always go deep into it. This is one of the reasons our teachers used to tell us when we were small, keep reading, keep reading, keep reading. Which means the more you read, the more you study, you will try to analyze it in a better way and you will find your own way to remember it. And then that will not be shattered. But once you remember two ones are two, Two twos are four, two threes are six, two fours are eight. If somebody tells you, maybe a mathematician comes and tells you that, look, two twos are five, then you will definitely say no, but he has a point, he can prove it to you. That's a different way of looking at things. This is out of box thinking. But how did we perceive the way we perceived? How did we perceive the way we perceived? It's because of um, the five senses, it's because of the five senses that um, we have. What are the five senses, by the way? The five senses are your eyes, your ears, your uh, skin, and your tongue, and your nose. This is the way we perceive something. We see, and right now what I took you through uh, is all the visual perception. You looked at something and you thought that this is the way it is and something is bigger, something is smaller. Now let's, let's play a trick. Let me just give you another one. 
wherein I'll tell you, um, if I tell you the word here, what does here mean? For somebody, it might mean this place. And for another person, it might mean here, hearing. Similarly, if I take if I take a small object and stroke it on your hand, somebody might feel that it's very heavy and the other person might feel it's very ticklish. Similarly, taste. Somebody likes sweets more, th more than spicy stuff. Somebody likes it tangy. Why? Because we are understanding the world around us. And another classic example is how we smell. Right now, if I ask you to visualize a forest, Visualize that you're sitting in a forest and if I tell you now smell the forest, you will easily be able to smell the greenery. It's not there, but then you'll be able to smell. Why did this happen? Because we have trained our mind to think in such a way. We have certain log book, you know, like a log book. There's a log in your mind which tells you when you're in a forest, when you're amongst greenery, this is how it smells. And if I ask you, can you visualize yourself as a young child that you were, immediately your mind will go there. And then if I tell you, visualize yourself as an old, old, old person, probably you'll try your best to do that also. Why did this happen? Because we know we have schemas in our uh, mind and we know that an old person will have these characteristics, a young person will have these characteristics and we try to fit in over there. And that is because of the perception. And how it happens is we think, first we think the way in a way, and then we tell us, we have a self dialogue. We tell us that yes, this is good, that is bad. Before that, I tell you this is the most expensive phone this is an iphone then you'll really think mm -hmm, is that an iphone or is that something else and then probably you will look at the features and decide okay that's an iphone all right and then what will you say okay i i agree it's an iphone but according to me it need not be the best phone in the world all right and for those who think that iphone is the best phone Next, what will you do? You will keep it in your mind that, okay, iPhone is the best phone in the world. And then we form schemas and that will stay with us. And which is why when people tell you, you might have heard this, it's very hard to correct a person who is in their 70s. It's very hard to correct a person in their 50s. So the youngsters have to correct. But my dear friends, there are innumerable examples that we can think of where people have begun to bodybuild at the age of 50, 60. People have begun to be a marathon runner at the age of 80. We have so many examples, so many, many examples. If they can change, then research tells us that now the way we understand the brain and its activity has to be redefined and revisited. Let me just give you one example. Let me just take you through a small story. This is a story of um, um, a wolf, a wolf tribal grandfather and his granddaughter. In a forest, there was a wolf grandfather who lived with his wolf granddaughter. The day was very busy. It turned into an evening and the grandfather told the granddaughter, now we'll have to put up some fire and to, uh, we'll have to keep ourselves safe. So there was a bonfire in the middle of the forest and the grandfather put up the fire and the granddaughter was really scared. So the grandfather told, let me tell you a story. Don't be afraid. The grandfather said, once upon a time, there, was, there were two wolves. There was a good wolf and a bad wolf. Both of them wanted to eat. And they came towards a particular place in the jungle where there was one huge bowl of food. And that's the end of the story. The granddaughter of wolf asked, Grandpa, but what happened to the story? That's not a story, but what happened to it? 
what happened to the two wolves? Who ate it? And the grandfather said, well, that's left to you. The wolf that you fed ate what you fed. This is what happens to our minds. What a nice analogy. Who wins? Is it good or bad? This is a perception. We think that something is good and we give our thoughts into it. Sometimes we think something is bad and we give our thoughts to it. But the reality could be entirely different. Most of the time, we have two shades to our personality. We have a shade that can understand and we have the shade that we cannot understand. There are two parts to you which can understand better and which can understand less. But depending upon how we have formed our perception, how we have understood the world, we feed that feeling in us. And hence, sometimes in a relationship, we see a slight dissociation. We see a slight trouble. We see a slight disconnect. If we can look at the situation from a third person's perspective, then probably it's very easy to bring that balance. What happens most of the time is we get lost in the story of our own life. We always tell, I was hurt, I was happy, but we don't look at our own life from the third person's perspective and not get involved in what is happening. That's when you can make the best decisions in your life. And uh, recognize your perception for you, feed your perception. The way you think about the world is the way you make your perception and you start believing in that perception and that belief becomes so strong that it becomes your frame of reference. And that frame of reference is what you hold like a frame through look through every situation. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. How do we correct this? I shall teach you that right away in a moment. But look at this three model of subjective well-being. All of us have an experience and that experience will is because we have some expectation. And with this expectation of the experience and experiencing the moment, we get into evaluation. Once we evaluate, Next time, we try to have the same kind of ex expectation. Suppose you have gone, you have uh, come to, uh, let's say you've come to New Delhi. And when you are at New Delhi, you will think that the parliament house nearly looks like this. Because last time when you came there, it looked like that. The trees were in full bloom. And now with that expectation, you come to the same place and you experience that now it doesn't look all that nice. The trees are not in full bloom. And then you have another image that is formed in your mind. Then you're going to evaluate. This is a repetitive cycle, but sometimes we get stuck. And sometimes we also are in a state of confusion. Do I need to do this or do I need to do that? And that's where we tend to take decisions that are not very conductive. Why is this so important? Why is it so important to recognize your perception? Because it is what makes you understand your own self. When you understand your own self, you form a self-concept. You form a concept about your world around, about your own self. Based on that, there are two other things will come into play. One is your self-esteem and the other is your self-efficacy. All these three together, self-concept, self-esteem and self-efficacy will define how you live in your life and what kind of dialogues you bring in your life and how the others have a communication with you. It's all in your hands. Let me reiterate my quote recognize your perception for you feed your perception have a look at this uh, my dear friends have a look at this image have you all haven't we all been through this situation Li we were told liars are bad people but then you just lied you just lied about something in your life how many of you have experienced this can you type yes if you have experienced this? 
Can you type yes in the chat box if you have experienced this? Yes. We have all experienced this. We were all told. Aren't we told, aren't we given the moral that we need, we shouldn't lie? Liars are bad people. We were told this umpty number of times. But there are times when we, when we probably took the aid of a white lie. White lie, it doesn't matter. It, it's not hurtful. That's all right. I need to manage the situation. So I just lied. Now tell me. Yes, it depends on the situation, Sandhya Bali. That's right. But now what happens is you are in a confused state. What do I believe? Do I need to believe how I'm going to sustain? Or do I need to believe the morals, ethics and values that were taught to me? If this is just one part of your conversation, imagine what is going to happen to smokers. I am a smoker. I know smoking kills. The pack of cigarette has 90% space given to it, which says it's carcinogenic, causes cancer. But still people look at it and they smoke. Thousands of people would have told them, don't smoke. And I'm sure we have a couple of people over here who, who would have heard this kind of a conversation. Smokers are told not to smoke. They know smoking is wrong, but then they continue to smoke. How can we come out of it? How can we come out of it? And the last one is, friends, I want you to look at this picture. What do you see in this? Can you type it? What do you see here? What do you see in this image? These four words. Evil. Good. Good. Thank you, Prem. Thank you, Nishanti. Thank you, Jaya. Cool. Okay. Egg. Wow. I never thought of egg. That's a, <laughs> that's a new one. Cool is a new one. Okay. Thank you so much, friends. Thank you. Thank you, Renika. Zoomerang. <laughs> okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much. You see, this is just a play of words. This is just a play of words. It's neither evil, nor good, nor bad. It's just the way you look at it. If the graphic designer wanted to create the name of a company as Good Wipes, then uh, he would have made us think with his all his creativity, good looks so good. But then if we could look at evil inside the word good, then we would have thought that it's not Good Wipes Company, but Evil Wipes Company. It makes a lot of difference. It makes a lot of difference. Somebody said cool, cool wipes. You see how we bring about our perception into such a small, basic, elemental alphabet. The way it is put across because of graphic designing, it makes us read it in different ways. My dear friends, this is a classic example of perception. This, if people have perceived evil, then it's because you're right now under a lot of pressure. Maybe your past few days have been very stressful. It's been, it's been very pressing on your uh, life and then you're struggling. And then that's the word that hit your mind. That's the way your brain actually looked at it. And if somebody is, has read this good at the very first time, then you're a person who is currently very relaxed. Probably you've had your meditation session in the morning or yoga session in the morning or you're just sitting in front of this particular presentation, sipping over your coffee and relax. It depends on our mood, but then we always perceive it in a certain way and this perception is associated with our emotions equally. Also, there, somebody gave another word, cool. Isn't it amazing? Somebody could see cool in which is neither good or evil. That's amazing. So nice. But why did this happen? It's all because of the way we perceive. And how do I beat this? How do, or how do I get disassociated from this confusion? It's, uh, it's especially important for those who think that I'm lost between what is right and wrong. I'm told to be 
and think in a certain way, but I don't. Psychology tells us that what we think and the, the thoughts that, that we build our thoughts, uh, our mind on and the beliefs that we have in our mind will define our behavior. And what and how we behave will give you a schema or a map of whether the things are good or bad. In other words, you will have a pleasant state of tension or arousal. Suppose I ask you to think about um, a green color food, a green color dish. What comes to your mind? You can put it in the chat box. Green color dish. A green color dish. Green leaves. Palak paneer. Palak. Broccoli. Cucumber. Okay, next one. If I ask you to think about a food which is red in color. Red. Apple, tomato, chili, right. Now I have another question. If you can think about something that's white in color, a food that's white in color, white, egg, milk, radish, right. Now, let me ask you one question. Idli, true, rice. These are the things that we associated to. Now. I want you to think about one dish that we cook, which is blue in color. Blue. Blue colored dish. Galaxy M3 OS is really thinking. Brinjal, I want to, I want you to think of a dish, dish. Like a brinjal, once you cook, wouldn't be uh, blue in color. Cake. Blueberry juice. Can't think of. That's right, Sandhya. That's right. That's what I was trying to imply. Nature, we think that nature doesn't have anything in blue because we have perceived our world only through greens and yellows and reds and other colors but not blue but if you talk to people from the other side of the globe the western world they'll tell you we have blueberry cake we have blueberry jam we have so many other different things that you can make of blueberry and probably if you go to punjab they'll tell you that is also sort of bluish in color when you make it and that was one of the answer i got here yes jelly you can have a blue jelly and how many times we have seen blue tea, how many times we have seen ourselves and our children and our youngsters eating that blue color chocolate. That's the simplest thing. I was looking for it. Blue candy, purple cabbage. That's right. These are all hybrid, but as Indians, probably we don't have that exposure. So we think it doesn't exist, but then it does. This is where cognitive dissonance, disson, dissonance theory comes into play. People have two different kinds of contradicting thought. Like right now we had Mojito, right? Uh, we had two different kinds of thought that, okay, blue is uncommon for us as Indians, but then blue might be the most commonest kind of jam for the Western world. The moment I say jam, you'll probably think about the Kisan jam and nothing beyond that. But blue for the Western world could be Blueberry jam, right? There is this thing of having two different kinds of perception. If you can now expand your horizon, then you'll understand that I need not be that contradicted in my thought and I can have an experience of the other world as well. But it gives us a lot of uncomfortable feeling. If somebody has not heard of blue tea, I haven't seen blue tea, but then if uh, somebody has not heard or seen or tasted blue tea, we will probably feel a little repulsive. How can tea be blue? Right? But, but then this is where we need to understand that this is coming. We are feeling um, uncomfortable because 
we are in this alter change of mind of uh, attitude and behavior because our mind is our thoughts are getting altered we are creating something new that is not at all what we have learned and hence if it is for good then with this kind of changed behavior we can even have a changed attitude and that's how and that is how my dear friends it is important that we understand why we lied and why we in that dilemma of lying is wrong is because of cognitive dissonance we have so much of confusion we don't know which is the right option we are jammed in between sandwiched in between two different options and we think that somewhere we are doing wrong but then we need to do it same thing with smokers they know that smoking kills but they continue with smoking and we need to break that change i have some i so have some uh, associated thoughts which will help you to have this cognitive dissonance a little shattered and then you understand that all right now i need to make a choice do i lie or do i go by my values do i smoke or do i not of course this can't, uh, this is where therapy comes in and therapy will help for uh, a person who is in this dilemma to help you quit smoking quit drug addiction quit alcohol quit certain behavioral problem also but my uh, presentation today is not about that but just to make you understand the way you feel and the reason behind the uh, way you feel with that uh, let me just tell you if you need to now um, tackle your problem at hand you might have any problem as simple as i am very um, aggressive with my friends i am a person who is filled with rage and anger what am i going to do you are being very inconsistent a uh, couple of your friends call you as somebody who is really consistent very good but certain of them think that no he is a very or she is a very rageful person so your actions and your beliefs are now creating that inconsistency inconsistency in your personality because there is more dissonance we have changed the belief of others and the way they um behave towards you and the uh, way they perceive your actions and also the uh, way they think that you need to change your actions so that you have a better kind of a assonance if you want to work on this then you have to decrease your dissonance and when you decrease your dissonance the confusion that you're creating in the world around you will also decrease but of course as i said said that's a completely different topic and uh, that's not what i want to uh, i intend to tell you today but it's just that this is how we perceive the world and our perceptions can sometimes help us and some sometimes even make us think in certain way that is not good for us as a last bit i have something in front of you can you have a look at my screen can you tell me what is this small ball it's a small ball is that it is that a small ball small yellow ball small yellow ball orange ball ball tt ball ping pong orange ball right lemon okay okay can i tell you something this for me is an object it's just an object i can just create a small beautiful orange ball if i can create just a slit over here and put it on my nose what do i become what do i become a joker right a clown and would you still look at me as somebody who is giving you some kind of gyan to me no you will look at me as a friendly person probably you will laugh at me now if i just take this and if i put it on my eyes suppose you are seeing a two dimensional image then probably these are my shades and if i put it over here then this becomes a beautiful earring for somebody similarly if i put it towards my neck and if i have a, a chain of balls then it becomes a chain i can make it into a bracelet i can play tt with this of course this is a tt ball this is a match ball a tt ball but then 
the way we look at it depends upon the way we perceive it and the way you perceive this ball it tells me gives me a clue as to how you are exposed to something that looks like this thank you my dear friends it was a great time spending time with all of you and i really appreciate that you have given your valuable one hour over here and before i leave you i have just something uh, to share with you i always in all my sessions with these positivity sapta sutra no matter what happens no matter what is your perception towards life no matter what happens with our life in general especially in the covid situation no matter how we live our life always we have to look at some positive positivity in our life find the optimistic viewpoint in a negative situation find that good in a bad situation find that yes in a no find that i'm all right in a very demanding situation the sutra the trick is be learn and accept to be comfortable in an uncomfortable situation i repeat remain comfortable in an uncomfortable situation then you see that you're not actually waging a war inside you you're not struggling and things just flow and cultivate and live in a positive environment you can cultivate your environment you can choose to be there and live there please slow don't take immediate actions and immediate um don't take immediate decisions think about it take it slow also don't make a mountain out of a molehill if somebody tells you that uh, listen i really don't think you're a good person well, maybe that person is a critic that's all right people have the right to speak article 21a right to expression <laughs> let them speak doesn't matter don't get bogged down take it as a small compliment or something that you need to work on and take it slow little by little step by step you'll be able to live a very good life in such in such a way that your life brings in value into what you do add value and positivity to someone else's life just like how dr krishnan and dr suresh have been doing they're bringing uh, these small talks to all of you and helping you they have they really are not gaining anything in terms of monetary benefit but then they're doing their bit to the community and the entire um, sponsors of this particular talk do something in somebody else's life and you will add value and positivity in your own life and learn to take criticism in a healthy way beyond anything start your day on a positive note with a positive intent i am happy i will make my day good thank you so much have a great evening thank you yes uh, thank you so much manvita for that uh, excellent presentation through that most of us are living in perceptions and illusions uh, keeping the reality at bay uh, if only we could talk out and know the reality most of the dis differences and disparities would be resolved thank you so much now uh, the form is open for question and answers and uh, participants kindly raise your hands and you can ask the questions i think we have uh, lochana suresh ma'am with her question lochana ma'am can you please unmute yourself and ask the question hello yeah uh, hi manita hello ma'am can you hear me yes yes very audible yeah, thank you thank you so much it's a lovely session on perception from the all the thank fundamental you, uh, this things uh, i have one concern see in this uh, yes. new changing scenario of the today's uh, environment and the situation a new normal yes. this thing is developing so what is a big uh, this thing perceptional changes that we may have to adopt uh how uh, i mean do we have to unlearn certain things to look at things in different manner so that in the new situation new normal conditions to cope up with that or can you give us some strategies definitely definitely that's a wonderful question uh today's world is definitely very challenging and uh, we think it is challenging because we were not prepared for it first and foremost so if you look at this particular situation at hand the covid lockdown situation we think that 
I'm I'm so out of balance. Things are not going well. Are not That's going because well. probably we were never told how was 1920, 1918 and 1921 plague. How was 1935 in our country? How was 1870s in India? Because we we were not exposed to that. We do read it in history, but we are not exposed to it. And hence we think that it doesn't. It would not happen to us. Now that it has happened, we definitely need to. understand how to see it in a better way yes there is a covid situation first and foremost you need to understand that we you are not the only person who is undergoing this stress we are not the only people who are in this crux everybody together are there and if we can come out together and that what that is what matters the most so uh, following the basic things such as social distancing and all of this will help us beat the bait but mental mentally you are locked down into your um the comfort of your house it could a house it could be discomfortable also at that time understand that everybody in your residence in your home are also facing something similar take a moment step back and tell yourself all right let me just look at it in a different way if people are cribbing at home understand that they are like child like now how do you behave with the child would you shout make sense no you are going to have a dialogue with that child which is going to make the child feel all right everything is fine now if as an adult somebody is trying to talk to you bring sense into okay let's embrace this action over something else understand that they are having a dialogue with you something that you can sit and talk across the table at the same time if somebody is uh, giving you a lot of um, advice do this do that then that's because they want to guide you don't mistake your own folks for what they tell you try to see what are they trying what is the message that they're trying to give you based on that take a moment take it slow sit back ponder on it invest some time and then decide to proceed with your response always remember when you communicate you can choose to communicate in such a way that your message is reached you are conveying the message or you can choose to communicate in broken words and that also can be done but if the other person doesn't understand then your whole communication and your whole intent of driving home that message is lost please use the tool of communication effectively so that there is efficiency in what you try to speak hence uh, you can resolve the situation of course we need to understand in today's world that things are not just the way we perceive change is the other name to like thank you thank you so much thank you thank you thank you. thank you thank you manvita thank you so much Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Now we Thank have a question from uh, Mohammad uh, Zairab. Uh, Mohammad Zairab, can you please unmute yourself and ask the question? Yes. Now you covered the overview of perception, but you didn't tell us how the perception is influenced. Is it influenced by the environmental factor or the or cognition? environmental factors or our cognition or our past experiences okay thank you actually i did speak about it mohammed uh, let me just reiterate our perception can be formed because of what we are exposed to as an individual how we are exposed to as an individual and why we are exposed to what we are exposed to as an individual your society can teach you certain things and your society might ask you to be in such a way you are taught as a child that your name is mohammed if you are um, if you were told your name is not a mohammed whereas it is something else probably you would have believed that this is what we learn we are conditioned to believe certain things at the same time we also experience certain situations in our life and we take our experience to the t and we think that this is the way life is and that's why elders always tell us talk to somebody who is more experienced than you they'll give you a different perspective to life 
And the last bit is the society also puts in enough pressure for us on us and makes us understand a few things that are probably not imperative, but then pressing. And it's needed for us to function in that boundary of society. Hence, we pick up certain ways and that's how our perceptual schemas are built in our mind, Mohammed. Thank you, Man. Uh, next, we have a question uh, from one of the participants. How to deal? Uh, uh, how can we change another person's perception by continuously telling about one uh, about their viewpoint? I think it's from Nanda from Amrita University. Sir, can you please uh, unmute yourself and ask the question? Nanda from Amrita University. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, ma'am, good evening, ma'am. Yes, good evening, Mr. Nanda. Uh, ma'am, if someone continuously says about one point, one viewpoint towards a person, can he able to change his uh, perception, ma'am? And somebody is telling something, uh, for instance, uh, somebody is telling something that... Um, Smoking is bad, and would that help the person to quit smoking? Is that your question? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma got it, right? yeah. That's a wonderful question. But then you see, perceptions and the schemas that we form in our head are very strong, and we tend to believe and live by it. But of course, when somebody is trying to tell you something a hundred times, then probably you'll give it a good thought. Again, it depends what you want and what you don't want and what you want to ignore. If you're a person who is very sensitive to the comments of others, then the chances are the person will take it and believe it to a great extent and possible, it is possible and the possibilities are high that the person might work on it. But are you, uh, if you're speaking about, can I ensure that um, I'm going to make somebody think that a black crow is white by telling them a hundred times. Maybe not. Maybe you will think on those lines, but a black crow to make it white is not uh, something that might happen. But it, it might make you think that, okay, there are other birds in our surrounding which are white in color. It could be a pigeon, it could be a dove. Hence, uh, if you're repeatedly telling something to someone, they, they will start thinking about it. But then if they're going to accept it 100% and change their perception, has a lot of other things that, are, um, that would play on it before they take their decision. It's just like telling somebody that um, um, you, you cannot do something 100 times and then they get into that cognitive dissonance uh, um, mode. And uh, they will be thinking whether I can and I can or I cannot. And that's where a lot of conflict comes in. And finally, they'll just pick one. But that's not the way uh, things are to be. You need to take a third person's perspective and analyze the situation and then take the first step. But yes, you can make somebody think on those lines, um, Mr. Nanda. Thank you, Mandu. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Uh, Next, we have uh, Supratima Banerjee with her question. Ma'am, can you please unmute yourself and ask the question? Supratima Banerjee. Uh, good evening, ma'am. Uh, <clears throat> I'm from Kolkata. Uh, ma'am, uh, as uh, I'm a teacher of psychology, taking for classes 11 and 12, uh, so I just wanted to know whether is there any connection between perception and emotion as such? Of course, there is a very good connection between perception and emotion, especially if you look at this theory that I put forth, cognitive dissonance theory that will easily tell you that uh, once there is that um, bipolar viewpoint, it, the polarity in your viewpoint, people tend to become very uncomfortable and when it persists over a period of time then they become probably aggressive probably irritable probably frustrated and that will show on their emotions yes there is a very good chance um, when perceptions are um, not the same and um, if uh, it's not in sync with 
the duality that is there in your mind, people do get into that um, confused state that will lead into further uh, irritability and frustration. So, Pratima Banerjee. Uh, so, ma'am, uh, if I say that somebody who is disliking a person, so uh, is it necessary that uh, sure he will be perceiving everything related to that person in a negative way or liking the person other way around, if I say, uh, everything will be perceived in a positive way, whatever the person does? Yeah. For that, we need to dive deep. But if I have to give you a very superficial answer, then it would be that if uh, I think that Supratima Banerjee is not a good person, and okay. if I think Veena is a better person, then I would probably always keep in mind that, okay, whatever Supratima does, I need to be a critic. And whatever yes. Veena does, I need to embrace it. Right. But right. if... If at a time Supratima is doing the same thing and Veena too is doing the same thing, then that's the time when I will sit back and think twice about my decision at the moment. And it can change over a period of time, Supratima, Banerjee. It, uh, there are a lot of other factors that come into play, but this is my superficial answer to your question. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Supratima Banerjee, and uh, thank you, Madhurika Moon. Thank you so much. Participants, kindly send your queries and feedback to my webinar feedback at gmail.com. Now, I request Subhashree Ma'am to please place a vote of thanks for this. Thank you so much. Uh, and yet another uh, wonderful session by you know Madhurika, and uh, we really enjoyed. I, I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Am I? Yes. 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 Yeah. Thank because you. This because Krishnan will be back of me and uh, you know <laughs> he will charge me after that. Thank you so much for the wonderful session and uh, we are really grateful. That was an you uh, know it's a kind of beginner session, but you were able to connect it with the reality and as well as practical uh, you know examples were given. It was really uh, amazing to relate with because that is a very dry area. Uh, you know the physical uh, uh, physics aspect will be there in the perception. So people uh, uh, don't actually get into much interested, but you have connected very well with the reality and uh, know how it is important for all of us to think about. And you also connected very well with the uh, black and white thinking and other cognitive dissonance. I really enjoyed the session. Thank you so much for this uh, you know, beautiful session you have done. And uh, please uh, uh, accept our gratitude from Department of Psychology, American College, Madurai, and as well as MSSW, and as well as MS Chalamuthu Foundation, and the core group members, and our home, uh, no, core lead, uh, Dr. Suresh, and as well as the entire participants who have been traveling with us throughout this webinar session. We have completed 125 yesterday. That is only possible because of the wonderful participants who are willing to learn, willing to participate, willing to actually spread positivity. That is the only key. We all are actually, you uh, know, just... Uh, and uh, I know point uh, to take this charge. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you so much, so much. Dr. Veena, can I take a moment? Yeah, please. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Subhashi, for those wonderful, kind words. I tried my best to give the participants a glimpse of what is illusion and how we perceive things. I hope uh, it's been fruitful. I would like to extend my thanks and my gratitude to uh, Dr. Suresh sir. And um, I would like to tell how uh, uh, this whole session and this particular uh, uh, talk had came into play. I met Dr. Suresh sir over LinkedIn and then he sent in a request and that's how it took off. And he's been really, very generous and uh, such a gentleman that he takes into consideration a few things and then he works upon it. And of course, I need to thank Dr. Krishnan sir. Over the few days, Krishnan sir has become more of a friend to me. And we share a couple of, um, we keep tricking each other about a couple of things in psychology. By the way, I'm not a doctor. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Krishnan <Thank> sir. <laughs> and I have not got knighthood. So you can just call me Krishnan. <laughs> you see the humor that he brings into play. That's such a nice thing. Well, uh, thank you so much, my dear friend Krishnan. <laughs> okay.
<laughs> and I'd like to also place on, I want to place on record my sincere gratitude and thanks to the American College and the Department of Psychology at American College for organizing this uh, wonderful webinar and also my extended thanks to all the participants who have been part of this particular webinar. Thank you so much. Gratitude. Thank you, Veena, for being a great host. So, Thank you, Subhashri, ma'am. Yes, participants will meet uh, tomorrow with that, another wonderful session. Thank you. Good night. Bye-bye. Write your feedback and queries to my webinar feedback at gmail.com. Thank you. Join us tomorrow. Yes. Have a great